Mr. Dove. Unmute if you can. How you doing? Hey, brother. Hey, what's going on, man? All right, man. Good thing I didn't wear a suit and tie. I was for sure. You <laughs> no, I, I I thought I'd just uh, do me, you know, hey, do me. Brother, I appreciate you doing you at this early in the morning. <laughs> <laughs> Only for you. Only appreciate for you. It. Appreciate it. How I you doing? My pajamas on underneath it, just so you, you know. And me both. <laughs> Well, I was kidding. I know you're not. <laughs> I hear you, brother. All mm. right, uh, ladies and gentlemen of the drive through we're here with Mr. Jerry Dove, a brother I met a few years back. Boom. Uh, just an all-around good brother, man. If I were to mention all the stuff he's involved in the meeting with, we wouldn't get to what he's, what he's really about. Ooh. All right, so I just want to say uh, he's the creator and the host of uh, Remember That Song, live and all of that stuff uh his his production company cherry purple cherry productions uh heavy into media from from the, since the time i've been knowing him so i just want to i want to i want to hit him up and talk about um how how you got into media why uh how we can help some of the other young cats that want to come up young cats and, and dolls that want to get into this stuff they can look out for um and, and things like that and, and then where you see things going all right well i'll start with your first question my whole uh radio career started back in high school you know because i was like most guys in high school i was playing sports with my buddies uh, i was on the track team i was on the basketball team my freshman and sophomore year got to my junior year i realized man, I'm five foot nine and 140 pounds. I ain't going pro on nothing, you know? So I better come up with some alternatives here, you know? So okay. we had a uh, a career day at the high school and a guy came through and said he was a DJ. Now this is, okay. I'm older than you guys that are watching probably. So when I say DJ, I mean an on-air radio personality. Okay. And he went to school for it. And I said, wow, you can go to school for that? And like, well, that's what I need to do. Cause I figured that if I can go to school and learn how to be a, a sports casting uh, announcer mm. and I'm connected with my sports and everything like that. <clears throat> There's a junior college that was like seven miles from my house and they had a great radio and TV program. So I quickly realized I love the radio part of it because I love music too. Okay. And decided I wanted to be a DJ. So I uh, I went there for a couple of years, Merced College down in San Joaquin Valley. Okay. Um, got on the air at a station in Los Banos, which covered the entire San Joaquin Valley. And decided I didn't need to go to, to any more school. So I went, I was gonna go to San Jose State to finish up actually. And decided I just would stop and do that. And so I did that for another year or so. Mm -hmm. Realized I wasn't making a whole lot of money. Mm -hmm. I need to make some money. So I quit. And it took me 20 years to get back to radio. So, um, and, and when I got back into radio the second time, it was the same thing. I was living up in the Bay Area at this point, mm -hmm. uh, living in Fremont actually. And all within the same month period, my father died of a heart attack, a house that my wife and I were renting, uh, they wanted to sell it. And I couldn't buy it, one, because I didn't want to, and two, because I lost my job. Okay. So all three of these things happened in one day, one month period. So uh, what I decided, I had to sit down, man, and honestly have a talk with myself and talk with God and say, what are you trying to tell me, man? What am I supposed to be doing here? And so you asked me to give you some, some knowledge for the younger folks. Here's what I did, folks. Mm -hmm. I took a sheet of paper, which I still have put a cross on it and put down what I want out of my next career, what I don't want out of my next career. And I put down everything I could think of, everything from, I wanted to work in San Francisco. I wanted to work in a tall building. I wanted to have my own business cards. I wanted to be able to work to where if the, if the Giants are in the playoffs, I can close my door and say, I'm coming back tomorrow. You can't do that when you're in retail, which is what I was doing at that point. Hmm. Every little thing I could think of, wrote it down. And then I wrote what I didn't want and my list of what I didn't want was so much shorter than what I did want. I said, okay, well, how am I going to get to what I, what I, what I, what I want, you know? So um, figured out my passions mm -hmm. were clothes, music, and sports. Now, again, I'd done retail for years. Didn't want to do clothes anymore. Didn't want to do retail. Mm -hmm. Now I'm five, nine and 175 pounds, but I'm 40 years old. So I'm like, I, I still can't go pro. 
<laughs> but uh, thought I'd try the music again. So gotcha. I went to Ohlone College in Fremont. Yeah. Another one with a great radio and TV program. Went there, got my chops back, got a job on a station in Stockton, and it just kind of took off from there. So very interesting, brother. Yeah. So 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 this is what this is what I forgot to pull up right before I, I got on with you. And uh, it's <laughs> because because this is you all day long, brother. Uh oh, what you got? This is for the cool. Can you hear that? <laughs> Big face. Yes, brother. Yeah, man. So, so like, like you always said, pull up some music, you know, while we talking and everything. Mm -hmm. Yeah, man. Mm -hmm. So this is definitely for the cool. And... All right. I appreciate that. I love Baby Face, man. Big yeah, face. man. So, 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 so back to, um, like you say, you, you, you put down your wish list and your wish not list and everything. And that 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 seemed to work for you. So as you say, to 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 send that out to the youngsters that have, as advice, why do you think that's important? Well, I think you need to write down, and you know, they always talk about a vision board and everything, and really put in writing what it is that you want and what matters to you, you know. So, and again, uh, some people may say, Oh, I don't want to work in San Francisco, it's too crowded and this and that. I wanted to work in the city, man. Mm. I, I grew up uh, as an Air Force brat. I went to high school in a very small town. I always wanted to live in the Bay Area. I always wanted to be a part of San Francisco. And so that was important to me. I always wanted to work in a tall building. Yes, bro. Because I always envisioned having an, uh, this office which looked out to San Francisco. And I actually worked in a very nice place downtown San Francisco for, for many, many years. And, that's what, and my office was on the 12th floor. Okay. So uh, all these things that mattered, you know, you got to put down what really matters to you and never mind what anybody else says, you know, so it's easy to say, well, I want to make a lot of money. I want to do this, but it's not about the money. As you know, when you get older, you got to find out what you really, what really matters to you, what you're passionate about. And in my case, turning 40, when I started this radio career was what, what I was passionate enough to start all over again, okay. passionate enough to be persistent enough to start at the bottom and work my way back up. And it came down to back to, to radio and music. And that's, that's, that's what mattered to me. And so sometimes you don't really realize what matters to you. You can see it in your face. You can see it in writing. And mm. you're just being honest with yourself. Mm. And that's, that's the bottom line. You know, be honest with yourself. Yeah, that's huge, brother. And you know what? I, I believe you might be referencing that tall building that you were kind enough to invite me and a, a young lady that I was mentoring to at the yeah. time. I think yeah. you were over at... Um, one of the intercom media as well. Yeah, it was, was the intercom with KBLX at that time. Uh, okay. Uh, I think I was the uh, assistant promotion director. I might've been a promotion director at the time, not only which. And okay. then I was community affairs director all, for all six of their stations over there. So mm -hmm. yeah, right downtown on Third Street. So when you say for all six of those stations, referencing KBLX, was it 98? Uh, it was KBLX, it was Coit. Okay. It was KFOX. It was 95.7 The Game, mm -hmm. and it was 99.7 Now. 99.7 Now, okay. Yeah, so yeah, it was five stations. Okay. Well, KBLX, I don't know if that's five okay. or six, I lost track, mm -hmm. but yeah. Yeah, that's huge, and and, and that, was, that was like the uh, business corporate aspect of it, when you say what, media or director of commun communications or something? Yeah, community affairs director. Okay. Yeah, well, uh, community affairs director. Mm -hmm. So um, when I was at, uh, I was at, well, it was clear, Jan, when I worked there, but iHeart is what okay. it is now. So I was there for 10, tw 10, 12 years, 12 years as the assistant promotion director for KISS FM and then a community affairs director for all 10 of those stations. I did that for quite a while. And um, so got laid off from there. That happens in radio. Mm -hmm. uh, took a year and a half off to start my entrepreneurial thing. Okay. And then that's when I got hired over at uh, Intercom, working with KBLX and did six years over there. Okay. Got laid off over there too on my birthday. Okay, yeah, I, I remember you telling that story. <laughs> so, 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 let's roll this into this. Let's talk about the pitfalls of working into radio and how that rolled into you becoming your own entrepreneur or or helping your entrepreneurship flourish. Well, you know, the thing about working in corporate radio and probably in a corporate world period is you got to know how to navigate your way around. Okay. Uh, when I got laid off from KBLX, it was 19 years in radio, and I decided, you know, I wanted to teach a class. You know, I wanted to teach people how to, how, and I think I even had a title, how to, uh, how to survive, how to thrive in the corporate world of radio. Okay. Because I would tell my young interns all the time, I said, look, you've been here six months and the only people you know in this whole building are the other interns. Mm. You're not doing this right. 
you know, so you need to meet everybody who's got a door. They got a door for a reason, probably because they need to close it every now and then and keep some secrets. You need to knock on them doors, introduce yourself and tell them three things. And, and anybody in radio or you're in radio, you know, if, if you ask them what they do and how long they've been doing it, well, let me tell you, young man, I, you know, because people in radio love to talk about their career. Mm. Because, and so if you go in there, you got a notepad, you say, look, uh, I'm Jerry. I got three questions. I just needed to meet you, uh, Mr. Hazen. Mm -hmm. And I was wondering if they can let me know uh, what do you do, how long you've been doing it, and what do you like about it. Twenty minutes later, you made such an impression on that person just by asking them three questions, and now you know somebody. And mm -hmm. you need to know everybody in all the different departments. And any internship, I would think that you would have, whether whatever the business is, find out is who you're working with and who you're working around and what they do. Because again, I used to always tell people on radio, there's fifty different jobs you could have in our building alone. You don't have to be an on-air personality. You don't have to be a promotion director, community affairs director, a salesperson. You could be the traffic department. You could be in the um, the web design. There's all kinds of different things you could do in that building. Find out some of the other things that are going on, and it might be more appealing to you than what you're trying to pursue at that point. Hmm. Um, I, I had a great time. had hmm. a great time. I think you just really need to know how to work it and, and be patient with it because... Uh, it's, it's kind of a hurry up and wait kind of a business. Mm. And um, what, help, what helped me at the beginning is that when I got back in uh, over Clear Channel, uh -huh. um, I was working with Kiss FM and Kiss, I don't know if you guys remember Kiss FM used to be an old school R&B station. We had Rennell and Morris Knight and Lisa St. Regis, some great on their personalities, Tony Sandoval. Um, and it was playing old school 70s music. And there had been a window in the Bay Area where there was nobody playing that music for about four or five years. Mm -hmm. And so Michael Erickson was program director and he came up with his concept and came up with a station. And hey, this is what I grew up with. I didn't have to study this. I lived this, you know. So mm -hmm. about a year into Kiss FM's existence, I had an interview with Michael Erickson just coming on to do anything, anything. You know, at this point, I'm 40 years old. Okay. I've been at the Ohlone College in Fremont, got the job I can mention over in Stockton. So I'm juggling two stations already. And then I got a chance to come to San Francisco. And so I got hired mm -hmm. as a as an overnight board op back when we had overnight nice. board ops. It's all automated now. Yeah. But back then I was working from midnight to, to six in the morning, playing music, couldn't talk on the air, mm. just playing music, playing commercials, uh, recording calls and editing for many listeners that happened to be up, but couldn't say a word. Mm. Making ten dollars an hour, bro. Ten dollars mm. an hour, mm. and then I was working in in Stockton, uh, driving all the way from Fremont to Stockton to again work late shifts and weekends, mm -hmm. and that's more like a hip hop station, hip hop R and B station, mm -hmm. and making seven dollars an hour, mm. but get to talk all night. <laughs> so, mm. and so it came down to okay, well, Kiss FM saw what I was doing and they saw the experience I had as a manager and in, in retail and all these different things, and I was pretty organized, and so. Um, they sent me, they gave me this, this station vehicle for, for okay. a couple of weeks and say, okay, we want you to drive the station vehicle, just stop places, give away t-shirts, keychain, this back when okay. radio had money, we had all kinds of, gotcha. yeah, yeah, yeah. and I would drive to San Jose. We always want to, I always want to get a foothold in San Jose. Okay. I didn't know where I was going. We didn't have GPS at the time. We used to print the maps out from MapQuest, right? <laughs> and so, so my job was twice a week, eight hours a day to just to drive around San, San Jose, park the vehicle and see who would come to us, see who would come running. And after two or three days of this, I realized that this is really tiring and boring. So all I did to separate myself, mm -hmm. I said, okay, on Monday, I'm going to do the Fremont Hayward. Okay. Tuesday, I'm going to go Vallejo Fairfield. Wednesday, I'm going to go to San Jose. Thursday, I may go to, you know, just Napa, or just, just to see if our reach was out there, see who was out there. And, just, and then I did as I came back at the end of the week, and I gave Michael a full report. Here's where it was. Here's yeah. where the, the locales that I went to. Here's what people are saying about the station. They don't like this. It's just a basically a report of everything. I'm, I'm thinking it was no big deal. His eyes lit up. He was so excited because that's what you need when you're launching a radio station. You need data. And so, and so that's what separated me from everybody else is that I was forward thinking, yeah, smart enough to think, okay, I need to do more than just ride around in a van and give away t-shirts. I need to make this worth my time as well. So, so I always tell people, uh, if, if, uh, you know, I understand peer pressure is huge, but if you don't want to stand out, 
mm-hmm. at least stand apart. Mm-hmm. You know what I mean? So mm-hmm. if you don't want to stand out because peer pressure, you just want to be one of the guys, well, at least stand apart from them. If you're going to wear the same white t-shirt and baggy jeans and, and tennis shoes, at least wear a, a green wristband. Mm-hmm. So I know that that guy with the green wristband, I like him. Let's go. Yeah. You know, so if you don't want to stand out, stand because that's the only way you're going to get seen in this kind of these corporate worlds and this and this radio because everybody wants to be a star. Mm. So you got to find the things that separate you from everybody else. All right, brother. I appreciate that. So, yeah. So you, you've covered some of the uh, some of the pitfalls. Now, tell me. So, so, so you, you also mentioned uh, it being boring to you and the low pay and all of that. So I could I could take that as some of the pitfalls and some of the some of the peaks about it. No, I, I think oh, let me interrupt. I, I okay. think for me, that was a starting. I mean, this is 20 some years ago. So ten dollars an hour. It still wasn't a lot of money, but it was better than it is now. You know, so, I hear you. But, but I, like I said, I, I, I knew I had to start from the bottom. You know, I was a grown man, and I knew I had to start from the bottom and work my way up. And I knew that I wasn't going to stay in that place for very long. So, so again, for 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 any type of entertainment industry business, you, it's as hard as it may sound, you really can't worry yourself about the money at the beginning mm-hmm. because you haven't done anything to earn it. Mm. You know, so I, I used to have interns coming to me all the time to say that they thought that being an intern for promotion department meant that they could go backstage and and meet, you know, the Izzy Brothers and Earth, Wind & Fire and Jay-Z. I'm like, no, no, you're going to be out on the on the deck, <laughs> out on the concourse, putting up balloons and handing out the stickers of people up there. So <laughs> for a while until you figure out that we can trust you and all that kind of thing. So and you got to work your way up. So I don't look at it as a, a negative thing. That's part of the part of the deal. You got to work your way up. That's, that's a good good perspective on it. Appreciate mm-hmm. that. Now describe some of some of uh, how that push uh, of of the art, uh, entrepreneurship that it pushed you into, such as IRTS, some of your shows on coffee, et cetera. Well, um, after getting laid off from Clear Channel, like I said, after twelve years, got laid off a couple of weeks before Christmas, and that that again that's that happens in radio. That's when they start looking at their. Uh, budgets for the following year and you know that i don't think they concerned themselves with the timing of it all it. um that was quite a surprise though you know but i know i didn't do anything wrong with this they were cutting and mm-hmm. they always go to promotions and community fairs when they start cutting that's the first place as they go okay and so i stay i said okay well i gotta find something what i was doing now a few months before this all happened is when i started this whole my first thing my first line about entrepreneurship i did um so I, I have a, a saying that I use in life where you make peace and you move forward, mm. you know, so, so I make a decision, I make peace with my decision and I move forward. Mm. You can get a whole lot of, if I would have, should have, could have, people telling you what you should do, uh, this overthinking some stuff, make a decision. If you want to talk about it, talk to one person that you trust, make peace with that decision and move forward. Mm. And so I just said, that's, you know, I'm gonna put that on a t-shirt. Mm. So I came up with a little logo with peace mm. signs on it and everything like that. So when I got laid off, I said, okay, that's cool. I'm going I'm to start selling these shirts and mm. other product to go with it. And I'm going to become a superstar. Mm. <laughs> so, um, that was fun. It was cool. It was hard work. Okay. Again, starting from the bottom. Mm. Everybody's got t-shirts. You got a t-shirt on right now. Um, yes. mm-hmm. and, and I did all the Treasure Island flea markets. I did all that stuff for, like, for about a year and a half. And then I say, okay, this is a, this is getting a little too too tired and not making what I wanted to do, and that's when the KBLX opportunity came along. So, okay, and once I got to KBLX, I realized, okay, now I got laid off once. I'm mm. not gonna let that happen and be flat footed again. So I kept my entrepreneurship going. I got another line of shirts now mm-hmm. that are just tribute to legends, which you know you saw me selling them at the San Jose uh, Jazz Festival. So, and so I've always kept that going. So now I've got the piece of me move forward. It's been going on for about 10, 12 years, and and the uh, tribute to the uh, R&B, jazz, and comedy legends been going on for about three years. Um, when I got Seems laid like off. like that's doing well, too, brother. Yeah, you know, it, it's doing okay. It, it, I always it, see it, people it, at your booth, man. Yeah, it was it was nice. It was nice. You know, you get the right event. Uh, it's, it can always take off. You can get the right event. So um, when I was at, uh, I was doing that while I was working at, at KBLX and Intercom. And so when I got laid off from Intercom, again, they're cutting corners, promotions, community fairs. They, I didn't do nothing wrong, I swear. Mm-hmm. But I got laid off on my birthday. Like I mentioned, I said, no, okay, that's it. 19 yeah. years, I wanted to get to 20, but 19 years is going to just have to be how it goes. And so I decided, well, what do you want to do now? I told you I thought about teaching a class. I'm like, okay, that's hard. God bless teachers. I did a, I did a career day, actually, for a friend of mine who's a school principal. 
okay. for uh, junior high school. And he said, come on out and test it out with this career day. I think I did uh, like four hours that day, maybe four different classes. Mm -hmm. Exhausting. <laughs> so I'm yeah. like, okay, I'm going to okay. leave this to the professionals. <laughs> I don't want to be a teacher. <laughs> you okay. know, I'm let uh, respect, pay them more money, you know? Yeah. So I said, well, you know, back to the music. Okay. So ever since I was a kid, what I do, I get my friends together. We sit around and we talk about music and what it means to us. Okay. And that's what I've been doing since I was a kid. I can remember the first time having friends come over to the house yeah. and put in a needle on, yeah. pick up the pieces. Oh, by yeah. the average white band, you know that one? Yeah. yeah. And about it, da 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 yeah. da 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 And yeah. we're all like trip dancing and carrying on. Like, and you yeah. know what? Those are white guys. They're called yeah. the average white band. Yeah. And we're like, no, what? Yeah. <laughs> so yeah. that kind of reaction to everything like that. And I said, that's the kind of TV show I want. Okay. And so I, I came up with this concept. I got my friends, Russell Gaywood and CJ Flash, yeah. who are world yeah. famous. I got Antoine Davis, who's still on KBLX. Okay. I got Ryan Nicole, who's a performer here in the Bay Area, who's a who's a, a spoken word MC, actress, activist, just just okay, you know. Uh, yeah. And then Tracy Anderson, who spent many years in in the label industry. And um, the first show time I did it, well, I, I take it back for a second. So I decided. This is what I'm doing, you guys. I, I haven't got it all fleshed out, but I think I want to do this. So I had a friend of mine who worked at Coffee TV 20. I used to work with him. Okay. And he's in sales. I said, okay, I got this idea for a TV show. I want to pitch it to you. And he said, okay. So I, I went over to, they were in uh, Moran at the time, or San Rafael, right over there. San Rafael, okay. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Yeah, and uh -huh. so I went over there and I sat down and I pitched me idea. And, you know, you know, it's got friends sitting down talking about music. I want a casual setting, like a living room. So it's all just like, you know, we're just sitting around chilling. It's okay. We like it. When do you want to come on? I'm like, okay. <laughs> well, I, I guess I better come up with a show now. Yeah. You know? so I said, I'll be back to you real soon. You know, so I went home. Mm -hmm. I was all excited. I called up my friend Dwayne Wiggins from Tony, Tony, Tony. I said, Dwayne, okay. I want to come over to your studio. I want to use your space. I want to do this test run of the show. And I want you to be a guest and this and that. So it was me, Russell, CJ, Dwayne, and Antoine, I think. Nice. And so, so I told the guys the concept. I told them the concept. And I talked to CJ a few days before and tell him the concept. And we're listening, sitting down talking like you and me. And, and he was right. playing some music in the background. And I said, what's that song, man? It sounds like something out of KC and the Sunshine Band, you know? He said, yeah, yeah, these guys were from Florida. They were on KC's label. Okay. So, 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 I, so, so like late 70s, early, early 80s, somewhere, he like 78, 78, 79. And he said, and you know what? It was produced by Larry Dunn from Earth, Wind, and Fire. Wow, wow. And I and I said, you know what? The first concert I ever went to was Earth, Wind, and Fire, George Vincent and the Emotions. Nice. And he said, oh, man, that's great. And I said, hold it, CJ. We're doing the show right now. Exactly. That's the show. You play a song. Yeah. You talk about what it's talk doing. For it. Yeah. And it extends into the production and the first concert you went to. Yeah. And I mean, nice. that's the show. That's all right, it. so when I got together with Dwayne and all them, uh, I think the first song that CJ played was Ready for the World. Okay. And the first mm -hmm. thing Dwayne said was, man, that was us on the Jerry Curl tour back in the day. Okay. And we all laughed and, and, and we started <laughs> talking about how we had Jerry Curls and I had a California curl, which is not as greasy as a Jerry Curl. And and I was sitting to my sitting there thinking to myself, this is gonna work, man. Yeah, yeah. This is gonna work. And so so we um I hired somebody to um to direct and produce it for me. And uh, we did four shows and I was intended to do the first four and stop and then just kind of see what it looked like, what we need to change. Mm -hmm. And uh, it was a good thing we did because it completely changed the format, got a different director and everything like that. Mm -hmm. um, and we changed the format and 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 uh, it took off from there. That's when you saw it on Coffee TV 20 and mm -hmm. you can still see it on Coffee TV 20. Uh, I don't know if I'm allowed to say where to find it. you said don't do that but oh, yeah, yeah we can tell them where to okay. find it just, okay. Yeah. okay you can find it on, on YouTube okay. IRTS space mm -hmm. show mm -hmm. IRTS, IRTS space st show. stands for space. what space I remember that song okay and that's it I remember that song so okay. so the whole concept is songs that are at least 20 years old and uh so it's not I just heard that song on the radio so I remember that song and we're not trying to stump you or anything the whole thing is you either know the artist Mm -hmm. Or you know the song. We're not trying to play a song that nobody's ever heard of, except you and your uncle used to play that 
in the back seat, you know, of, of the limo when you were uh, of the car when you were out fishing or something like that. Mm -hmm. So it's not a, a contest or anything like that. So, okay. Well, so speak, that's, that's speaking where of where to find you, uh, 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 drive through, drive through listeners, we're speaking with Jerry Dove, an entrepreneur, um, uh, media general, gentleman, a uh, very nice gentleman that I've known for a few years. Um, and give us your website and, and where they can find out more about you, man. Well, you can go to the website is irtsshow.com, irtsshow.com. Got a few other places on social media. If you go to Facebook, there's the IRTS show. But on Facebook, I, what I'd really like you to do is go to the VIP lounge. Okay. And so what I did was I created a, a Facebook page called the IRTS. I remember that song, VIP lounge, as a way of uh, keeping connected with my audience throughout the week. Our show is every Tuesday at 7 p.m. So we've got a show. Uh, coming up real soon. As a matter of uh, fact, tonight, 7 p.m. Tonight at 7 o'clock, uh, mm -hmm. uh, New Edition. Going to talk about the music of New Edition. And so and so I figured, okay, we go from Tuesday to Tuesday. What's going on? And so I said, I come up with this page. And what I do is on the page every morning at 9 o'clock, 9.15, 9.30, 9.45, and 10 o'clock, I'll post a different song. Okay. 9 o'clock is the challenge of the day. It may be uh, name your favorite song. Like today was John or Daryl Hall's birthday. Daryl Hall, okay. Hall and so, so, so the whole thing was, okay, I'm just name me a song by a duo. And then I'll link, I'll put a link to a song by by whoever I pick. In this case, obviously it was Hall and Oates. Mm -hmm. And then at 9.15, we'll do something a little bit newer, maybe 20 years old in the 80s and then early 90s. Mm -hmm. um, then I have a way, way back section at 10 o'clock, which goes to the 60s or 70s. And then at 9.45, there's a legend that we always pay a tribute to. And so we get a lot of people, there's, there's thousands of people that are on the page that pay attention to that and react and, and respond. I mean, you've been on there. Mm -hmm. uh, and so I like to keep that involved. So if you really, really, really want to go to Facebook, go to the uh, IRTS VIP lounge okay. and just follow it. Go right. to the YouTube page and hit subscribe. Go to Instagram page, it's IRTS show, and uh, hit subscribe. So, um, all, and we're on Twitter too. I don't do a lot of stuff on Twitter. <clears throat> I don't want to get into any arguments with somebody in Kentucky talking you, about my shirt. <laughs> you know, right, like right. So I don't even know you, player. So this is not even do that, man. So, <laughs> so I don't get into any Twitter wars with anybody or anything. So, but yeah, mainly uh, the VIP lounge YouTube page. I'd uh, appreciate anybody clicking through and following us. It's a lot of fun. That's that's awesome, Jerry. We're just about at our time limit. And and I just want to ask you, man. So where do you see things going, you know, forward looking? If you were to look maybe five, five, 10 years from now, where do, where where would you see things? Um, specifically, you're talking about in music? Or yeah, in entertainment, uh, what you're doing uh, for the for the youngsters even. Well, I, I think at this point, everybody it looks like everybody's going to be an entrepreneur and everybody's got to figure out what it is that they're good at and uh, and and make it happen. See, the thing that you got to remember, though, is that there are things in life you have to do, things in life you want to do and things in life you're supposed to do. Mm -hmm. Find out what it is you're supposed to do. That's your gift. I truly believe that God has given every single one of us a gift, something we could wake up at two in the morning, roll out of bed, get a phone call. Yo. Jerry, I got a problem. Just okay, you do this, blah, 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 do this here. Okay, you got it, you got it. All right, I'm going back to bed. Mm -hmm. That's your gift. You know, if you don't want to do that, then figure out how to monetize that, teach it to other people so you can pursue the things you want to do. Mm -hmm. I'll give you an example. I had a person who uh, I sat on and said that same thing to, and I said, Well, what is it you're, you're good at? That you're really good. She said, Well, I'm a manicurist and I, I'm, I'm great at doing nails, but I don't do people's nails the rest of my life. I said, Well, teach people the way you do nails. And then you become the business person and you open up that shop and then you open up another shop. Mm -hmm. And then by the time you look up, you've got three shops that are by doing your concept, you're running the business. And what you're doing is you're having fun with your recording studio that you put in your backyard or in your, your back room in your house and you're doing what you want to do, but never run away from what you're supposed to be doing. That's your gift. Mm -hmm. And a lot of people chase things that they're not supposed to have, man. Mm -hmm. It's not supposed to be there. Man, I wasn't supposed to be a professional athlete, not at 5'9", 140. <laughs> I, was, I was not. <laughs> I, I wasn't Spud Webb, bro. I wasn't that I guy. You, I hear I'm just you. a skinny little kid. I wasn't no, nothing special. Brother, brother, you said a mouthful. <laughs> now, now, man, that, I, I could close with that, but, but I always close with this question right here, man. Can you cook, brother? <laughs> Can I cook? Yes. 
Yeah. <laughs> I can cook a handful of things. I can cook with mess. I can make a great lasagna. Okay. I can I can I can cook steaks, although I don't like steak. Okay. I can make uh, breakfast and some breakfast foods. Uh, I could survive if I had to. Yeah. Why you ask? <laughs> that's, that's one of my questions, brother. <laughs> <laughs> I, 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 and I could eat lasagna two three days a week. I've been good, man. I'm I, yeah. Okay, because I, I love cooking, man. And Do you? Okay. I, I don't know if that's what I'm supposed to be doing. It's just mm. a passion. I love to cook and I love to ask people, can they cook? What's your specialty? I'm not sure I have one. I'm really not sure because I, I just I just like combining flavors, man, and you know, getting that pop out of it, you know, putting mm. it in going, oh, this is good. I, I don't know okay. what my specialty is. Yeah. Okay, okay. Good. All right. Yeah. All right. Well, good. Good. I'm glad to hear that. All right, Jerry Dove, man, I appreciate you, man. And tell, tell them one more time where they can find your info, bro. You can check out our show every Tuesday night on the social media networks of Facebook and uh, Twitter and YouTube at IRTS Show. I remember that song, Show. Uh, you can go to the website at IRTSShow.com. Uh, you can also see the t-shirts I was talking about and, and pick up some of those if you like and just... Um, Make sure you follow, hit subscribe, like it, follow it. And tell me what you think. All right. Peace to you, Jerry, man. Uh, like I said, you invited invited me and Mickey up uh, back when we were just trying to figure out what it is we thought we wanted to do. And I appreciate you for it, man. So I figured out. Know, I'm very happy and proud of you too, man. You keep doing what you're doing out there in San Jose. Thank you, brother. All right. Peace, and I'll be talking to you soon. Hey, peace and move forward. All right. Thank you, Jerry. All right. All right, brother. Dan.